Okay, welcome back to our survival save and today we are going to do hopefully a short video all about our drives. Okay. So as we know we've only got the indium drive left to do, but for the sake of making this video um, all about all of them, we are going to start again. So we'll put the emerald drive there and the cadmium drive there. Okay, so the first one is the cadmium drive, and to build that, you don't need anything special, alright? Well, you do apparently need to be close to your ship, so let's get close to my ship. Okay, so you don't need anything special, it's just some more wiring looms and some chromatic metal, so let's do that. Right, so we now have the ability to travel to red star systems as well as the yellow ones that we've already had access to. Alright, but if we want to travel to green ones as well then we need the emerald drive which will allow us to go to green, red and yellow. Okay, but to build this we need cadmium which we can only get from the red systems that we just allowed ourselves to go to by installing the cadmium drive. So let's go to space and move ourselves to a red stellar system. So we go into our galaxy map and if you look in the top right hand corner of the screen there's something there that says filter currently saying no filter. So we'll just run through these. You've got the life form filter which changes the um, stars to different colors based on which life form is there. So yellow looks to be Gek, red Viking and blue then is going to be Corvax. Yeah, the white ones don't have any um, uh, any different races there. Okay, the next filter is conflict, so this should be pretty self-explanatory. The conflict's pretty low if it's green, it's sort of medium if it's yellow, and it's really high if it's red. Okay, easy enough. Economy. Now, this is where it gets slightly more complicated because there's lots of different types of economy. Um, so there's lots of different colours going on there. Um, you've got a uh, cyan one for the high-tech by the looks of it. Um, there's sort of an orangey colour for the mining. Uh, you've got a purple for whatever that is. Science, technology? I don't know. I forget. Um, and blue, yeah, so that's all about the different um, trade routes basically, and uh, again I'll show you a video about the trade routes at another time. Alright, but what we want is no filter, so then that keeps these stars in their real colours. Alright, and we want a red system at the moment, don't we, because we want to get some cadmium and we've just installed the cadmium drive. So, let's warp to this planet. And what this means is that in this system, Every planet and moon there should have either cadmium or activated cadmium. And it will only be an activated one if the planet in question has severe weather. So like really bad storms. The writing will be red. Um, writing about the weather in the bottom left hand corner of the screen will be red if it's going to be that kind of terrible weather. So let's scan these planets. Activated cadmium on that planet. So that is a lush planet, a temperate planet it's called here, but the activate, presence of activated cadmium tells me that that is going to have some wickedly bad storms. All right. So let's scan this one because we're not after the activated cadmium, we want normal cadmium, which this planet has. It does also have aggressive sentinels though. Again, it's another paradise planet if it weren't for the aggressive sentinels. All right. I can see that there's a, another planet behind this, so let's have a look what that one's got. Oh, and it's got two moons with it. Alright, so this planet I moved too quickly there. I'm going to have to work on my scanner to recharge then. So this planet is a freezing planet. It's got cadmium too. But whatever, this one's really close by, so we'll put up with the aggressive sentinels. Why not? 
gives us a chance to look at a, a lush planet anyway. This is the flourishing type of lush planet. Ooh. Okay. So we're just looking around for a random red mine somewhere in the ground. Or if we find a building to land at, that'll be fine as well because we can use our analysis visor to find the mines anyway. Not really seen any mines or buildings. So it looks like the resources on this planet are pretty scarce. Might go and try one of the others instead, maybe. So I'm not actually seeing any mines in the ground whatsoever. Mm. Yeah, okay, I'm giving up on this planet pretty quickly. Let's go to this cold one then. So this one will have cadmium, dioxide and silver. So cadmium because we are in a red star system, dioxide because it's a cold planet, and silver is just the one that it picked randomly for that last slot. there as well. Okay, so it was over here somewhere. I'm sure I saw it. How did I see it? We can't have gone that far, surely. Uh, dioxide over there, that's probably what I passed. That's a cadmium deposit right there. The one that I saw. Okay. So, remember that when we are using our terrain modifier to dig some of this stuff up, we absolutely want to switch it to its smallest version. Alright, we don't we don't want this massive thing. Alright, we want the tiny thing. Okay, because we will get a lot more out of it that way. See, it's barely editing anything, isn't it? And we've already got 40 odd cadmium without really doing much damage to the resource deposit itself. And that is why we use the smaller version. Right, while you're next to one of these, always, you know, get a good amount of it if it's safe to do so. You know, you're not getting attacked by anything and the weather's not absolutely wrecking you. And dig the lot up because cadmium, and especially the act activated versions of, of cadmium, emeril, emeril and indium, are very rare, so, you know, get, get them while you can get them, because you're, you're definitely going to need them. But look, I've barely done any damage to it yet, and we've got probably a good 200 cadmium already. Right, literally depleted my weapon. <laughs> and there's still loads left. Don't worry about it going this funny yellow colour, that doesn't mean it's empty. It's just the textures. As you can see it's still mining cadmium from it. You'll know when it hits normal ground because you'll start getting silica powder instead. Alright, now, like I say, we can keep mining that for a while, but I think we've got more than enough. Alright, so we've got almost 500 cadmium in total there. 
In fact, yes, it's 501. Alright, so let's get back to our ship then, wherever that went. Just there. It really annoys me that the range for transferring items isn't a little bit longer than that, even with the technology installed, but whatever. Alright, let's move this cadmium to the starship. 501. <laughs> Okay, so we can now build our emerald drive with the. Ah, oh, what have I done with my wiring looms? They were all on base, weren't they? That's annoying. Fine. Well, we can put the cadmium in anyway. Uh, I think I'm probably going to cheat with the wiring looms. And go buy some. The space station, if there is a space station. There is not a space station. I'll get lost, I'm going into the galaxy map anyway. Alright, so I'm going to make my way back to base then. I'm going to make my way back to base then, which is here, to get some wiring looms out. I think the wiring looms were in my um, monitor exocraft. I think that's why. So I suppose I could have called that in. Could have called my exocraft in and done it that way, but I've only just figured out that's why they were. Seriously, you're going to attack me in this system instead? How's that for? Oh, it's no, it's not that. It's a uh, rescue the freighter's mission by looks of it. Where are they then? No, I think maybe they did just follow me from the other system. I'm, I'm very confused. Ah, here we go. Here's, here's the freighter we're rescuing. Right. This actually looks like a fairly decent freighter. So we will save it. Because we are still in need of a freighter. careful not to hit the freighter or any of the, the ones with green trails because they are they are allies not enemies. Yeah. Right see I don't really want to fire it in there because I might there we go. I have to be really careful though I didn't want to end up hitting the freighter. One more. Got a bit of freight to there, so I've got to be really careful. Ah, oh, there he is. Oh, I see him dead. Anyone else? No, that looks like we're good. Right. This looks like it's one of the medium Star Destroyer types. So let's go see if it's any good. Because at this point we could really do with having a freighter. We've actually gone quite far into the uh, story without getting one yet. Because we turned down the first one. Ground 2912. Hmm, that's not too bad, I guess. Yeah, let's go accept it. I have a possible 34 slots. This does tell me that the uh, freighter slots must then be at uh, 12, then that's because that's two different ones that have done that. So they must be planning on adding something else for the freighter tech. Inspect freighter. Except. Right, so we now have this freighter as our own. There's already some uh, stuff in it. And the technology slots are a little bit awkward, but I can work with it. So I'll use those eight. And I'll ignore one, two, three, and that one over there. Yeah, okay. 
I'm alright with that. This guy is our frigate navigator. So we might already have a frigate or not, I don't know. But we need to build command rooms and stuff, which I'm saving this for another video, so I'm not going to do anything else with it. I'm just going to leave. I'm going to change my mission to building the Emerald Drive, because that's what we want to do. So you can purchase wiring loom from space station terminals. But I've already got some at my base, so I'm just going to go to the base. Storm crystals in it, so where was I getting the wiring looms from, I wonder? Okay, so let's transfer the wiring looms from my storage containers then. Um, they are definitely in here somewhere, I have everything in here. I wonder if I've passed it, it's quite possible I've passed it. I must have passed it because I'm onto food now. I'm sure it's early on. There they are. Right. So we can now finish building our MRL drive. So we now have the ability to go to green systems and we're back on track to where we were before I deleted those drives. And we are left with wanting to go to blue star systems, which we currently can't because we haven't built our emerald drive. Uh, I've already installed the wiring looms in there, so I can probably put these wiring looms back in storage. Okay, but in order to build it, we need to get some emerald, which we get from green star systems, which we can now go to because we've built our emerald drive. Just going to pin that. If it will let me. Oh, just messed that up. I'm going to pin details. Alright, so it's now. That's how you pin stuff to know what it is you're trying to do and to remember what you're even trying to do because half the time you can forget. Alright, so we're now looking for a green star. There's plenty of them around. The one right there. I'm actually going to see if there's one nearby that's got a slightly better economy. Not really. Well, it's got better. One a three star, ideally. Just. I'm testing a theory basically. I think that it's possible that you'll get more resources. There we go. I think it's possible that you'll be able to, be able to find more mineable resources on planet if it's a um, better economy star system, but I've never really tested that, so I figure why not have a look now? See if I can notice any difference. Oh, there's two planets here. So let's scan this one. It's a hot planet, Torrid in this case, it's got activated emerald, so that'll have some hot storms on it. And this closer one here is an airless planet, which basically means it's a dead world. Um, but it does have emerald on it, and that's what we want. So there'll be emerald, rusted metal, and sodium. And hopefully, because it's a dead planet, 
it will be um, fairly flat and easy to find stuff. There won't be any buildings on it because once again it's a dead planet, nobody lives here. I think I've just landed directly on some emerald. How nice. Oh no, that's rusted metal. Oh, typical. Alright, let's use our build, uh, our photo mode and have a look around. You can see it's very, very dead. Some interesting shapes for the, the rocks and mountains, I should say. But yeah. Let's use our scanner then. That's sodium over there. Rust, more rusted metal. Subterranean relics, eh? Let's go look at them then. That's what I love about Airless and Dead Worlds is you bounce around like nobody's business. Can't actually see which gun's which because the recording thing is over, over for me. I mean, you'll see it perfectly fine, but my recording thing is over where it tells us what um, gun I've got active. Alright, so let's pick up some vortex cubes, lovely. But we are looking for that emerald right there. Seems to be some distance away. Where's oh, but that one? That one's close, so let's go to that one. As you can see, the gravity here is rather amusing. <laughs> okay, so let's make sure we've got our smaller terrain manipulator on. Yep, yeah, okay. I'm not so sure that was the small one, that was the medium. Whoops. Okay, so mining plenty of this. Really, I could do this all day, but let's not. Um, so we want to keep the video as short as possible. It already takes hours to upload to YouTube, and I'm sure you don't want to be watching me mine stuff all day. So back in our ship, come over to the Indium Drive. Oh, I've not got enough of it yet. Okay, fine, we'll mine some more. 250, apparently. <coughs> The great thing about using the terrain manipulator is if, if you hit a bit of the normal land you get silica powder back and you can then use that silica powder to charge the terrain manipulator. It's a nice circle, means that you can keep it going forever basically. Alright, we've got more than enough now. So, fix out the emerald. And that is our Indium Drive working as well. So we can now go to Blue Star Systems, we can go to Green Star Systems, and we can go to Red Star Systems. Now if you're not too worried about um, getting the, uh, the little bonus here by having the Emerald Drive next to one of our S, S hyperdrives and the Cadmium Drive next to an S hyperdrive, if you're not too bothered about that, then you can delete them now. There's no, no need to have them really because the Indium Drive goes to all systems, all right? The blue, the red, and the green. All right. So, and the same goes for when you built the emerald drive. You didn't necessarily need to keep the cadmium drive. Um, I'm keeping them here purely because they are giving an adjacency bonus to these two S-class hyperdrive modules. All right. Which means that the um, hyperdrive range goes up a little bit because of it. Now. You might decide that you need the slots more than you need the little bit of extra hyperdrive range, and that's fine because it's only hyperdrive range, it's not a massive deal. And the bonuses that they give you aren't necessarily massive, so yeah, it's up to you. And I think that that pretty much rounds out this video, really. I'm going to put these where they belong in here first, as we have these three missing gaps here. 
and those were four cadmium, emerald, and indium. I suppose I could go and get some indium now very quickly from a blue system before finishing the video. Um, I don't know if it's really worth adding another five minutes to the video just for that, but why not? Okay, so we now need to find a blue star. All right, this is where it gets slightly complicated, purely because to me the blue stars look a little bit like white stars as well. I mean, you can tell the difference, but they do look quite similar. So I'm just hoping I picked the right one. scan there. Activated indium. Now that is um, basically when you're doing your industrial mining in a little while there'll be a video on that. When you're doing that activated indium is the thing that sells for the most right, out of everything that you can mine. So when you've heard people online going on about um, activated indium farming that's what they mean um, is industrial mining. Um, but we want just some normal indium at the moment, so let's look around for another planet. Are you going to tell me that's the only planet? No, there's another one behind it. Oh, I can see the rings for it right there. planets. This is one of the exotic planets. Again, I'm hoping to um, make a specific video about the exotic planets too. I suppose I can um, drop the base computer here and make that video a little easier when I come to it. Oh look, a boundary failure. Got our base near that then I guess. So this is a foaming planet. It is filled with bubbles. This computer, where are you? There. Name base. I'd like to rename base as well to foaming. So I'll be able to come back here later. Um, these boundary failures, why not? Let's go into that now. Have this little terminal on the side. And if you read what it says, you see this little thing that's moving around on my left shoulder. Yes, the, that's the annoying thing that keeps screaming at you, no free slots in suit inventory. Uh, then that, that thing's name is Telemon. And these boundary failures will tell you all about Telemon. Okay, so let's have a read quickly of this first one. Iteration number whatever. The terminal blinks awaiting input, so download data. Subroutine Sentinel dispatched to intervene in life form designates something war. Removal from history, continuation of creator protocols. Sentinels eradicate species, do not return. Diagnostic. Error. Error. Data loss. Error. Analysis. Continue something. Continues to express original programmed directives, growing its ability to model conflict scenarios. That gap is Atlas, by the way. The Atlas continues to express original program directives, growing its ability to model conflict scenarios. Redundant behavior. Data loss troubling. Potential loss of control. Self-awareness. Okay, so that everything we've just listened to was Telemon when back when Telemon was attached to the Atlas. Um, in fact, a good way of thinking about it, in, in some ways, if you've ever played Portal 2, um, you've got Wheatley, um, who's like a stupidity uh, computer basically that was attached to Glados. Um, similar thing, except that. Um, Telemon here isn't stupid <laughs> and it was designed to keep the Atlas in check. But as in case you haven't figured it out, the tele Telemon is now with us and not with the Atlas. 
so something obviously went wrong and if you want to find out more about that keep going to these um, boundary failures and reading the law there and bear in mind that whenever it's got the little dashes it, it's talking about the atlas anyway we are here for some emerald oh we've got some bubble clusters to pick up as well as we're here this is a uh, the exotic planets have um, in this case bubble clusters but they are um, objects you can pick up and place down somewhere else like on your base um, you don't necessarily need to be on your base to place them down um, so for example if I go into my build menu and I go decorations I go over to glitches there's my bubble cluster and I've just placed it down there and I can change the color of, of these things so let's make it yellow or blue oh, it seems like the bubble clusters actually are a bit immune to the coloring thing yes they are okay but the rest of the exotic um, trophies you can make into different colors uh, but we are here looking for look some more floating crystals we are looking for some indium which is over there so we don't need the indium to uh, create any more drives we've got all our drives already however I would like to have some indium on me to take up that slot in my cargo slots. Okay, and that'll do. Don't really need loads. So, indium over into my cargo, and now that's my initial uh, resources all filled up, ready. All right, so I go up to nitrogen in the same order as they are in the um, catalog. Um, and then the rest of this, these gaps I use for everything else. I could potentially put the rest of the uh, resources in here, but actually I'd rather have them in my general slots anyway, because you can, if you're not playing survival, you can fit more, in fact even on survival, you can fit more of certain items in here, the actual item items in the cargo slots, than you can the resources. Um, and if you're playing on normal, there is literally no point in having your resources in cargo if you've got other things to put in your cargo slots because it goes up to 9999 whether they're in the cargo or the general, doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, I would usually maximum only go up to these four here and leave the other um, two lines for items. Um, yeah. So that's it, that's that's the coloured drives on our ship sorted. Um, yeah, that's the end of this video. So have a nice day. See you later, goodbye.